It's about me uh, and why did I come into contact with these time series data visualization thing. Uh, the last about eight years I worked at uh, Kimita.de building uh, vertical search engines, mostly job search engines. And with that comes all the operating and uh, analytics and um, stuff that you have when running a live uh, web thing. Um, yet uh, now since uh, the beginning, beginning of October I switched jobs and uh, I'm now at uh, Autada.de and uh, we're building authentication systems around electronic ID um, using smartphones. So basically if you want to open an account then you can take your uh, new passport, put it next to your Android phone <coughs> because the NFC is open, uh, enter your secret PIN and then prove to your bank that you are you and open the account. So that the basic idea which you're doing there. So if you want to talk about that or help me build it, talk to me afterwards. So back to the topic. Uh, as I said, uh, operating a search engine means correlating uh, a bunch of data from different sources. You have the classic analytics data, so the mobile apps generate some data, the web server generates data, which uh, pages are delivered, which searches are made. The Browsers out there, the clients for the web app deliver data, which is usually handled by the, the Google Analytics stuff. Your servers themselves generate data, so they have CPUs in there that do stuff. They have RAM, which can get full. They have disks, which are busy or get full. They have databases, which get slow. And uh, you also have links between your systems. Uh, and have message queues or a network interface data and uh, your providers which provide you your connection to the internet also provide you with data what they are thinking your systems are doing. So it's many different util util uh, utils and um, you want to answer many questions that cut across these data streams. You want to answer operating uh, operations questions uh, like is everything all right? Do I have to wake someone up because something broke? Um, you want to ask uh, uh, stuff like, when will we need to add more servers? When will we need to add more databases? When, uh, how long will it take uh, until the network interfaces are too small? Stuff like this and also if you have some bug in your system and pages are running slow, you want to know and, and you make a bug fix, you want to be sure that the bug is really fixed and it's not just your machine which acts uh, correctly. And uh, these are the uh, operations questions and you also have analytics questions. So the quite simple uh, things like at what time of day do we get the most users? And you change something like, I don't know, make the buy button red instead of green and you want to know, does this have an effect on my sales? Um, and how do my sales this week or my page impressions compare to the ones last week or last month? So, for a few of these questions, there are tools which are quite colorful and give you analytics, like the famous Google Analytics thing but they are vertical tools. Google Analytics doesn't allow you to input more of that data that uh, they doesn't account for. It's basically just the browser data. Uh, this is one limitation. The next limitation is um, if you have a website that is really generating some traffic, then the uh, Google uh, Analytics version that you get for free, or no, that you pay with, with your data, sorry, um, doesn't answer all your questions anymore. So if you want to know, I don't know, what's the mobile slice of your uh, um, business is doing, then they are sampling and you have answers that are based on only 1% of your real data. So it's limiting. Uh, so yes, it's nice, but the free stuff is constricted and the enterprise stuff is enterprise expensive. Not so nice. Then you have stuff which is not so beautiful. Um, and uh, so stuff like this Windows Performance Monitor, many of you probably have seen, um, which accounts for the Windows Performance Counters, which, yes, this it gives you answers to um, most of the measurements uh, of your computer. And if you have an Active Directory and some uh, 
admin that knows what he's doing, you can also get stuff across your computers. But then it's only the Windows performance counters and not your web server data and not your browser data. And the internet providers use stuff like this RRD tool, which is an, I don't know, about 20, 25 year old Unix utility that makes these colorful graphs, which look nice, and uh, they also integrate external data sources, but the tooling for producing this graph is mostly command line stuff and uh, really arcane data wrangling until you get something like this and it's also not really refreshing real time. But these importing everything and having round robin databases, so different sets at different resolution and hmm, time series, let me think. Everything I have is time series data. So time series data, uh, CPU usage, percent of uh, utilization per second, has a timestamp, has a value. Memory usage in percent, for example, has a timestamp, has a value. Disk usage, HTTP requests, message queue length, and also going to the example I'll be showing, as the uh, real search engine data is proprietary and not really comfortable with me taking it out of the house. Uh, temperature or energy output of photovoltaic installation. Also you have how warm is it inside this room, how warm is it outside at a uh, given time, how much energy is the uh, photovoltaics on the roof producing. Um, it all came together when I stumbled upon this uh, blog post by the uh, Etsy operations team. Etsy, the eBay for crafts stuff. I guess you'll be familiar with it. They are quite forthcoming what they are doing operations-wise. And uh, they said, yes, we have all this stuff and we make graphs like this and they update automatically and our engineers love it and the business uses it to make decisions and we do alerts from this and basically they said, graph all the things, in, uh, meaning uh, if you have values that change over time, then you better make a line chart out of it, basically. And this is what uh, graphite, and they use graphite, so I thought, okay, let's check it out. Um, so it's a time series data store that can render and compose graphs on demand and has some um, decent utilities for uh, doing research with, uh, no, not research, but uh, for trying to extract information out of your data. So you can think with the metrics. So if it renders graphs, how does it look? It looks like this, which probably reminds you of the RRD tool screenshot you already saw. And we'll have a look at uh, how it looks um, now when it's uh, running on this really tiny, not really powerful laptop I have here. Um, so this is okay nice, but the nice thing is it also has different front ends. And uh, now we get to the no longer ugly part. Uh, you have stuff like Grafana, which is a front end for graphite, which is more suited to building dashboards that you put on big monitors in your hallway, uh, where you can see, I don't know, are my web servers running good? Is the engineering stuff, uh, are my servers still healthy? Is for the operations guys? And how many page impressions did we generate yesterday or how many ads did we sell yesterday? It's for the business guys. So every one of us has some kind of numbers they're interested in um, that should be halfway recent. So it doesn't always have to be data from the last five minutes, but data from yesterday would be really fine mostly. And if this doesn't suit your needs, there are advanced utilities that are more bleeding edge in terms of uh, code quality and production readiness, but also in terms of visualization efforts. Well, there's something called Taseo, which produces something that looks a bit like the Excel spark lines. So you can see about what the, the waveform is of your graph and the most recent value. Um, and there's something called cubism.js, which does something that is called horizon graphs, which compresses uh, graphs of larger amplitude uh, 
by um, taking different shadings of the color and compressing it down. So the darker stuff is the real value and the lighter stuff means it should go more down in the case of the blues, but to fit it in this small space, they just cut it up and set it uh, behind each other. So, uh, I had found a tool that can visualize the stuff, but um, uh, in, in many cases, I don't want to look at the raw metric, but I want to modify it in some way. So I have these compose graphs thing, and uh, as we will look at in a minute, uh, we could modify single graphs. We can say, I want to sum it over time, so instead of saying, uh, I want to know my page impressions for every day, I could just sum them up over a month and say, make one big number out of it. Or I can say, what is the day where I have the most impressions or the least impression? It would be minimum, maximum, or I can smooth very jumpy curves by averaging this over the time and do all the other um, mathematical operations that make sense with a line graph. Like, I don't know, make a derivative and see is it a going up or down? Or make an integral, how much, how much value do we accrue over time? Um, I can remove stuff above or below a certain threshold if, I don't know, my, my metrics are flaky and sometimes I have infinity in there. Or, and this is uh, especially probably the, the, the most interesting thing for me, um, is time shifting the graph. So we have the time, the timing of the graph, and we can, if I time shift it, so I, um, I overlay the graph from today with the one from last week, and I can see is everything okay, because I can see is it like last week, basically. And if I have many graphs of uh, the same metric across different hosts, for example, I can aggregate uh, this series of graphs and uh, then compute one thing out of it. So I could take the least one, the most one, I can sum them up or average them. So one single bit of theory till, we, uh, till I get to the uh, practical part and show you something. Um, because I told you how to make pictures of, uh, out of your data and uh, how to compute uh, when I have multiple series, but I didn't tell you how to get your data into. So one way is to um, use some of the many pre-existing plugins. This thing here on the right is the web page of tools that work with Graphite. You can't read that, and this is intentional, but you should know that the upper part, the light part, is about, I don't know, two dozen uh, input plugins, where you can put stuff from Windows performance counters, from databases, from uh, basically any text form that exists here. You can stuff into there. If it, if it has a timestamp and a number, you can import it. And you also have here a choice of uh, frontends. I showed you some of them, but there are many more uh, so that you can visualize your data uh, in, in different ways. And if that doesn't uh, work for you, because you have some special case or data that is not covered by any one of the other plugins, you just use API, a set of APIs to build your own. So if you have, and this is going to the uh, concrete example, uh, my smart or not so smart home installation um, has some is uh, running with FHEM. I don't know. Probably some of you will, will know this. It's uh, basically a Perl script grown out of control that uh, controls uh, heating systems and can collect data from your uh, home devices that can send data to the network. This produces log files in this format, so it's an nearly ISO timestamp, some name of the device which says living room heater, some name for the metric and the metric itself. So I wrote some scripts that uh, shuffle the data around and then we have here a metric uh, which is a string separated by dots, so kind of like in URL. 
um, I have the metric itself. So in this case, the actuator, this is the thing that uh, broke on the first uh, heating here, um, is zero, so it's cold. And we have here this long string, which is the Unix timestamps, uh, so second since the 1st January of 1970, if I remember correctly. Yes. And um, when you have these text thingies, you can just put, you can just, no. There are simple ways to put them on the network, to send them to a port uh, for your, uh, in your graphite server, and then there's a web component that writes it to a database, and you can visualize it. So, let's have a look. Um, I'll switch to the browser. So, this is one of these graphs. Um, as you see, it's um, running here on this, this localhost, and it's quite a complicated URL, which is, if you read this correctly, um, it's a bit descriptive. So you see here something like from, looks like um, an hour and some kind of could be a date. So if I change this here, it's requesting a new picture. Takes a while, cause slow laptop, but then you see the picture changed. So the API to generate different graphs is driven by uh, this long URL with parameters. But this wouldn't be a nice interface. So I take this URL, and then here is the uh, web interface, the, uh, which I showed you a screenshot from. And it has here a button, Create from URL, where I can just input this. No, like this, and the picture should change. Yeah, there you go. And then you can see down here the, um, it's the names of the metric that are shown. And I have some graph data button where I can add a new metric. For example, I could add the total energy, which should be drawn in a second, and it's too big, so we can't see anything anymore from the graph below. But if you apply a function, you can do something like move this to a second y-axis, so that the metric for this new thing is drawn not on this y-axis, but on this y axis over here. And to, rem uh, to remind you of this, it's also shown down here on the right. If you know what you're doing, and the people who look at the graph also know what they're doing, this is great because you can compare uh, metrics on different scales. But you have to be careful who you show this data to uh, and what conclusions they draw from it. With this one here, it's probably not a problem because it's only the uh, power of the photovoltaics installation on my roof, so I only confuse myself. <laughs> but if you do this with sales data or um, page impressions and you try to tell stories to your management and this management goes to the upper management and tells different stories, who knows what's happened. So remember, keep your story simple, keep your graphs simple if you're telling stories. If you're re researching your stories, make them as complicated as you want and as complicated as you yourself can understand them still. But if you want to present them, make them simple. Uh, okay, but uh, this is enough for this um, not really beautiful interface, but really practical interface. The uh, one which uh, may more people want to look at looks like this. Uh, and not only because it's dark, you can only, uh, also switch this to the, 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 the light interface and have it m more bright. Um, but also uh, because you can hang this on, the, on your monitor and have it scrolling all day long. Um, and you can here zoom in here by just marking some segment, having a bit of patience because of, you know, slow and stuff. Um, and also focus on different metrics like the temperature or the, the humidity or both again. 
And um, so one last thing before it's getting uh, too late and I get served a beer to kick me off stage. Um, if I want to edit this, there's uh, some edit window in here, which uh, shows me um, the path through the metric. And um, so let's focus on the temperature and then copy this to make some comparison of the temperature of the, I don't know, last week or something like this. So I duplicate the metric and I add some, um, some function in here. So I transform this to time shift this for a week, let's say. So now we see up here that the orange one says me, uh, t tells me this is the temperature a week ago and the green one says this is now. Which is okay, but maybe last week it was very rainy or very sunny and it doesn't tell me much. So um, I could now just make more time shift queries for uh, different points in the past. But as this is a quite common use case, there is a special function for this. And you can say, I'll transform this by making a time stack of the one day in the past for each interval. I start with interval zero and I take seven intervals. So now we have, should have about eight, yeah, eight uh, metrics in here. The metric of today and the metric of the last seven days uh, before this. Now I can't see anything anymore. And I also wanted not to, to know what each of the temperatures were, uh, but what the current temperature is compared to the average of the last seven days. So let's do this. I combine, combine them by making an average. And here we go. So we have the green one, which is today, and the orange one, was, which is the average of the temperature of, of uh, this time of day over the last seven days. What's left now is to make uh, this a bit long description in the metric a bit uh, more readable. So I'll have some alias and I say average of uh, oops, last seven days or something like this. And then it also looks good here. I save it. I go back to my dashboard and there you go at the average of the last seven days. So you could prototype your dashboard, you can think in your dashboard and yet when you're uh, happy with the result you just save it and can share it with the organization. Uh, you also, the, it has also some kind of user management system so that not everyone can see every system and stuff but we didn't use that, it's mostly just thinking about the data and say, say, say to the colleagues, here, look, I found this, or we're researching for some problem, and then duck into the data if we find some explanation. Um, it's an open source tool. It works on this uh, Ubuntu thing, the, um, but if you want to try it out on Ubuntu 16.04, you have to be a bit careful because of the version that ships with it is broken. If you want to do this, talk to me and I'll uh, tell you how to get uh, all the nice icons back. Um, so it's the usual stuff with open source, you have to pro provide a bit of your own time and energy to compensate for a bit of polish. So that's my point. If you have questions, I'm uh, glad to answer them.